Big Boy's Big Neighborhood. Boy. All righty now, man. Back in the neighborhood. Nipsey Hustle hey. in yeah, the yeah, yeah. Top of the top. What's up? What's, What's up? going what's on, up? Nip? Victory Lab. We I coming. know, man. Yeah. Victory Lab, yeah. boy. You been, we've been talking about it. You know what's, what's crazy about when we think about albums or something that's being pushed now is that the promo game never stopped through social media. Right. So we've been waiting on it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then we'll see pictures of you recording or you know what I'm saying? Yep. So we always knew that Victory Lap was coming. Mm -hmm. And now we here. Yeah. Man, but I also got to say congratulations, bro. Yeah. So so Atlantic Records. Yeah, we did but, it. But you did it your way. Yeah, definitely. We did, yeah, a, we did a strategic partnership, a venture with Atlantic Records between, and this was, I really want to clarify, the, the deal is between All Money In right. and Atlantic Records. Easy call. Oh. Nip been signed to All Money In since the beginning. Go ahead now. So, you know, <clears throat> um, Atlantic, you already know they, they tradition. They make household names. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, man. And, and they've been successful doing that for years. But being so successful on your own. Right. That's why when I saw this announcement, I right. was like, man. Yeah. Like, Nip didn't just walk in there. Mm -hmm. Nah, we've been, mm -hmm. and actually, we've been, we've been trying to land on the terms that we landed on for some years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it just was about me raising my leverage and my profile to where I could really justify what I was asking for. Yeah. And, Smart. you know, um. I respect that. Like, if I come in here and make a request, you gotta, and they, you know, the the answer is like, you ain't worth that shit. You gotta go, yeah, you gotta go get it. it. It's possible, but you gotta work for it. Sometimes that. you gotta show and mm -hmm. tell people your worth that too. Yeah. Did Atlantic pack? They passed on you or earlier, right? Yeah, I got a song called Keys to the City, and obviously it was a different staff over there at the time, mm -hmm. um, and I had a different value, so yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it yeah, makes yeah. sense. But um, in, in Keys to the City, I got a line. I was just like. Um, Dev, I said Drake Pass, Def Jam, Capital Atlantic 2. Thought that I'd be dead of doing life because what I rap is true. So I was just talking about all the labels that Damn. I walked in and building and played music before I, you know, like I said, had value. And some of them felt it, some of them didn't get it, but I just was was referencing um, taking those meetings and, yeah. and, and how that felt. Mm. And then when I made that record, being at a, a moment when the music I was making was really being received well and the profile of me as an artist was rising so i just was reflecting on a moment when they didn't really see the value you know? hey nip mm -hmm. let me ask you this why now um <clears throat> a lot of reasons like i said I, my goal was to create a, a, a situation where i could walk into one of these majors and mm -hmm. operate as a partner right and even since my early early stuff i never really was just an artist i always bought my equipment from day one i, I sold my lincoln sold my rolex sold my jewelry Left my dope spot, mm -hmm. turned it into a studio, bought equipment. My brother matched me. My homeboy bought my Lincoln from me, brought me a trash bag full of cash, As bought my should. rims, my uh, my Alpinas. Um, <clears throat> I sold all the things I was functioning off of, took all my money, and my brother matched me. And we went to Sam Mash and we bought all the equipment when I was 19, when I was 18, actually. So, you know, as I was educated in music, that's what the production company does. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what the label do. I was paying for rent. I was a hustler. I wasn't thinking I was the executive. I was just like, if I want to rap, I need a studio. I need equipment. I got to yeah. be. Mm -hmm. but we was making these moves already as a, a, um, a production company or as an executive or as a label to facilitate me as an artist. So the money was coming from my brother, from myself. The, the decisions was coming from my team, myself. Um, the posters was being stapled mm -hmm. up by us. You know, the radio promo, we was going up there and buying the radio spots. Mm -hmm. We was booking out the House of Blues. We was doing all the things that a label do. So um, once I got educated to the way that the deals get structured, it would be disrespectful for us to expect anything other than right. a partnership. Because we've been had sweat equity. We've been had money invested. Yes, sir. We've been operating as not only the creative, but also the administrative. Mm -hmm. So it would it would be against the grain of reality to go yeah. into a situation outside of that. Because when I saw it, I was like, oh, man, yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? When yeah. they say, like, damn near keys to the city or, or write it up and we'll just put a stamp on it. Yeah. I knew that was it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's You know what I'm saying? Because you definitely ain't starving. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, thank God for that. We, yeah, man. You know, we have been before. Boy, you show cold, though, man. I I'll tell you why when we come back, man. <laughs> we were on that DJ Khaled cruise, boy. This dude was like, big. next time I come and see you, I'm going to have one of them things for you, one of them oh! necklaces. Oh, oh you talking about it? my, you know, you know, he talking about my jury. Yeah, big, yeah, yeah. He said, let me get some things. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I'm doing your hiding. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, he got you know, he, a few chains. Oh, so, you know. <laughs> man, and you know what he <laughs> did, man? Not that he worried about somebody taking it. He was, he put it in his shirt for like man i hope big don't see that i'm oh, wearing them because hiding. i did offer them to him honestly oh, he just if, I, if I had all my jewelry on top of this 
um, crew neck, I look goofy. It's just it, it ain't just so. Right. Let me look That's goofy. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? I look goofy <laughs> enough. You know what nah, I mean? I can look more goofy. <laughs> nah, you and fresh. once again, Atlantic Records, all money in, all yeah. money in yeah. Atlantic Records, man. Yeah. And, and you made sure that when you when you talk about it, you talk about it. Mm -hmm. You put it out your damn self, right? You know, and and I've had a chance to just witness just the come up too. You know what I'm saying? Like there ain't nothing. That I could look into and say, oh man, this is this is early nip when you know like yeah, yeah, you've yeah. been nip nipsy since yeah. the introduction, Day one. Right, right. you know, and it, it hasn't been a let me change to this style, let me do this. You always did it your way. Right. Did you know that this was going to turn out the way it did? Man, that's a dope compliment too. I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> honestly, because yeah, the only thing we could do is is like hair. Like, oh, this when he was younger. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah exactly. You know, his clothes yeah, a little yeah, back yeah, here. Exactly. You know, oh, yeah, he got, you know, so, yeah, but but material-wise, right. nah. And honestly, you know, coming into it, we was hustling. Yeah. You know, so it was a it was a step back to want to pursue music. It was a yeah, setback. I know what you're talking about. You know what I mean? So it was something that I had to really believe in to pursue it because it was actually taking a back seat. Did you ever get down where it was like, Definitely. man, this ain't going to work? Or, you know? That's why I call my thing the marathon because yeah. I, I'm not going to lie and, and, and portray um, this ultimate poise. Like I've been, had it figured out. No, nah, I just didn't quit. That's the only distinguishing quality from me and probably whoever else going through this or mm -hmm. went through this or is going to go through this is that I ain't quit. I went through every emotion. I went through mm. every emotion with trying to pursue what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Mm. And I think that what what gonna separate whoever's gonna try to go for something is that you ain't gonna quit. Unless, you know, you're gonna really take the stance if I'm gonna die behind what I'm what I'm getting at right now. Let me ask you this, man, with and I've had a chance to sit and talk to you on and off air. Yeah. See you do panels and everything. Yep. And your mind is way beyond yeah. what cats are doing right now. Right. Ownership buying buildings mm. you know what i'm saying the yeah. smart store the marathon like yeah. you know I, I walked into that the marathon store and i was blown away bro no question and you got to explain what the marathon the marathon store is yeah um <clears throat> so in a quick way it's basically the first of our vision to have a retail network the first mm -hmm. store which is the first step toward us having a retail network where we could distribute products mm -hmm. outside of best buy outside of target outside of traditional retail like Apple got Apple stores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. American yeah. Apparel got American Apparel stores. Right. Um, you know, San Rio, like Hello Kitty, they got stores. So certain brands um go to the point of creating a retail experience too. So we wanted to do that. And we wanted to be able to drop not only music, like when we did the hundred dollar CD, mm -hmm. imagine if I had ten stores across the country that I could have shipped a thousand copies to right. at a hundred dollars each, and we could have released it on that day simultaneously, and then mm -hmm. I could have done my pop-up shops at my stores. Mm -hmm. And then we surround them with actually um, a dope streetwear line and also dope novelty items like the All Money In Money Counter or, like mm -hmm. I said, the streetwear stuff, the Crenshaw sweaters or the All Money In hats and whatnot. But the main driving factor would be there's an exclusive music release that's exclusive to these stores as opposed to being exclusive to a digital platform mm -hmm. for a week Imagine we can make the album exclusive to the store. You can only buy mm -hmm. it at the Marathon store. Mm -hmm. So that's the long, big, big picture vision with the Marathon store. The the technology aspect, um, which makes it a smart store, is just that all the products are encoded with content. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So every piece of product you buy, there's a tag on it, and it's a logo. And we, as All Money In, have the ability to upload content in real time. So you can buy this sweater today and the mm -hmm. tag that's hanging today will have a piece of content on it that next week I can change. And I can say, oh, wow. wow. Yeah, yeah, I can say, go that's get your- That's awesome. Yeah, and it's, wow. it's on the actual tags of the clothing. So I can say, go get your Crenshaw shirt out the Dirty Clothes Hamper. I just uploaded the new documentary. Wow. To your T-shirt. Wow. That is yeah. so advanced. Yeah. So hey, it, man, because I was in there, man. They were putting phones up against the wall and everything, <laughs> man. Yeah. And I always, I tell people now, if you look at this right here, if you- Oh, I don't do nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're gonna work on that. No, we gonna, no, we gonna, we gonna update your, your yeah, setup yeah, yeah. for you. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm living in I'm living in the past down there from with you, man. Nah. But, but just you you met the young dude, Idris. I did. He was yeah, on, that he was dude on was the cruise with us. Beast, man. Yeah. That dude. Yeah. And how did that relationship get together real quick? Man, you know, my, my nine year old daughter, Money Ma, shout out Money Ma. Hello. We was on the way to the movie. She said she wanted a unicorn frappuccino. Hey. And I, I'm, <laughs> I pulled funny. over um on the way to the theater. And I thought about it too, because they sell snacks at the theater. I'm like, I don't really want to stop. I'd rather just go to the theater, but it's my daughter. I did what she asked. 
And based on me stopping there, I ran into this young dude that had his computer open. He was working on something I could tell just by looking at the screen. It was it wasn't released. It was like um, he was waving his hand over his t over his computer screen, and his hand image was showing up on the screen as bone density in three D. Mm -hmm. And I just knew technology enough to know that's not out. And I started talking to him, and that was Idris. Yeah, the dude's name is Idris Sandu, and he's um one of our partners that we um curated and designed a marathon store with. You know what I mean? The technology aspect of it, and then also we we doing other things together too, but. Um, yeah, my daughter was that the reason I met him. That's, beast, that's awesome. Yeah. Stop saying your daughter was the reason too, because that's gonna cost. She was like, yeah, I, mean, I gotta give her her credit. I, okay, I gotta right, give cool. her credit. But I don't yes. tell my kids nothing like that. Yeah. Like, Daddy, I oh, no, no, I'm going with that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Until you pay me back. We had a chance to speak on um the spot that you got, the five thousand it was a five thousand square feet spot. Too big, too big to fail. Too big to fail. Yeah. Now what is too big to fail? Man, y'all getting a, y'all getting exclusive right now. Uh -oh. well, yeah. Give us what you can. No, no, no. It's basically something that myself and my business partner by the name of Dave Gross. Mm -hmm. He's a real estate developer. He come from Wall Street. He's just a dope investor, and he also grew up in in the inner city of L.A. Um, his brothers, you know, went through the 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 the, the street stuff in L.A. He was somebody that um, pursued finance early, and basically he partnered with me. And it was his original concept that he brought me in on, but it's basically a science, technology, engineering, and math center mm -hmm. on the first level. And that's STEM, acronym. That's that's an acronym for STEM. Yes. Wow. And what's important about STEM is that all of the jobs in Silicon Valley require STEM knowledge. Right. So if you're going to go work at Google, Facebook, any one of these billion-dollar companies that have very, very little diversity and that will hire just based on there's not a lot of qualified people. Skill. Yeah, that's that, that come from set. our ethnic backgrounds. Um, it's important because they saying that there's no pipeline, that these kids got to learn so early that public inner city schools are not training them to go be a mm -hmm. part of Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. So the idea for Too Big to Fail is that we'll be a bridge in between Silicon Valley and the inner city. And it's a model that we're going to scale. We're going to start it in L.A. and we're going to go to Baltimore with a, with a celebrity mm -hmm. or an influential person from Baltimore and then go to D.C. and then go to wow. Dago and then go to Atlanta and create Too Big to Fail as a as a resource network across the country. But the other side of it is that it's a it's a WeWork model. And WeWork is basically um office space for rent without a lease. Right. So if I'm an up and coming entrepreneur, I don't got credit, I don't really have enough to make a full commitment to a two, three year lease, I can go in and say, I want to rent it for a month or a week. Yes, or sir. Or a day. Or and even on, on top of that, the other side of it is that um if you don't have cash, you can offer hours. If you're a young entrepreneur from the area and you and you live in the area and you can't afford to rent your office space with cash, you can say, mm -hmm. I'll give labor and I'll come work for the, the operation and I'll come help around the building in whatever way that you are a specialist in mm -hmm. and we'll prorate your hours based on you giving back time. Wow. Hey, Nip, yeah. why why take on that much? Because usually it's like, man, yeah. I'm good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Usually it's kind of I and me as opposed to us and we. Right. Why us and we? Honestly, bro, I, you know, as as I move forward and just become more successful and more um, access is granted to me, mm -hmm. all these things are coming to me. I'm not sitting down uh, mapping out these things as much as I get credit for. I don't I don't sit all day um, in terms of thinking about a lot of things outside of the priority, which is the music mm -hmm. and the, the music operation. But based on what I what I say and through the music and what people I think have got from me from interviews and just what they see my intention is. A lot of people bring these opportunities to me and be like, look, I know you believe in this because I heard you say this, or I heard this in your song, or I heard you say this in this interview. And here's something that, you know, we can address, yeah. we can address that with. And it's already built. And I, I've been privileged enough to be able to look at it and say, this is dope. I believe in it and start from there. And again, I, I'm the voice, so I get a lot of the credit, but I got incredible partners. Yes, you know, sir. my brothers. Adam Fats, my brother Sam, JP, Karen, um, Steve O, even before the Atlantic thing, you know, uh, Dallas been working with me, Dallas Martin, mm -hmm. since day one. Um, and then just outside of that, you know, like I said, Dave Gross is the mm -hmm. guy that really mastermind the too big to fail thing. He just was like Nip, the perfect person to do this with in LA. And then we did due diligence, found a, f um, a factory in my area, mm -hmm. um, talked to the city councilman, got the city involved. And it's dope. Like when you when you really see the announcement and what's going on, it's really some unbelievable next level stuff. When do you think we'll see that? Like February. Damn. Wow. Yeah, it's done. Right around the corner. It's done. I, heard I was quiet that. about it because you know it was a big, big thing to do. So 
you always got to like not put your foot in the mouth because yeah, you might get yeah, postponed. Yeah. You might yeah. have all type of things that happen. But and then the, what happens? I thought you was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It went good, though. So it's looking like February. Nip, yeah. what is Victory Lap? Man, it's like I was about to tweet something or, fa or Instagram something yesterday. Um, I just feel like this phase two. Mm. So Victory Lap is like me celebrating me me completing phase one. Mm. You know, and it was always like my, my, my challenge to myself was to not be influenced by the threat of failing and mm -hmm. not and not doing it. I wanted to do it my way and I was willing and, and I was I was cool with it not working. If mm. I couldn't have it my way, I was cool with it not not working. Cause I didn't want to have no consolation prizes. I didn't want right. to have no plan. But that's, B. you can see that on on the time that you put in it too. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? Because usually we're so used to Okay, they all, take it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if it's going to come back again. Yeah. But it seemed like you gamble and you double down on your on yourself. Yeah. So when when I saw Victory Lap, I was like, okay, I kind of felt yeah. what it was. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And I mean, I've been working the title for like three years. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe more than that. Truthfully, for my real, real fans, about five years if they really been following. I've been, I've been saying that my debut album is going to be called Victory Lap. Hey, man, is it crazy when you say debut album? Yeah, with all the material though, <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because because yeah, even when we say mixtape, you yeah. know what I'm saying? It nothing felt throwaway. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And even as a consumer, like when when I kicked in my hundred dollars, it wasn't like oh I got to kick in for Nip. I kicked I in for the material to. too, though. That's love. You know what I'm saying? That's love. So when when I see just the work that you continue to do, I'm like, man, they they ain't no expiration date on what this cat is about to do. No, nah, that's love. Thank you. And I mean, I trip on that too. Like, dang, I ain't put an album out. Yeah. But then, to your point, I never made a project with the intention of I was making a mixtape. <clears throat> right, yeah, 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 yeah. I was always making an album. The whole 10, ten years I've been here, I've been making an album. Mm -hmm. And the business change that took place as I came in, like our generation, the 07, 08, 09 era of artists that came in, we had to fix the, the plane while it was in the air. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the engine went bad while we was in the air. Because we looked at like the artists that came before us and the models they used to succeed. And then as soon as we got in the game, the whole model yes, collapsed. Yes, man. So you had a Record lot. Records stopped selling like that. Labels, everything, everything changed. All conventional wisdom out the yes. window. And you was left to rely on your instinct. And yes. I think like, you know, I shout out Wiz a lot because me and Wiz had a convo early. And, you know, I asked him like, what you doing to build the touring up? You know, I see your, I see your show popping off in a way that's, that's different. And he... You know, we had a real convo, and I think that he one of the artists that innovated early, mm -hmm. artists like Currency, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that really embraced the the indie route before it was like the cliche thing to do. Um, you know what I mean? So I think myself included in that, we had to adjust to survive. And, and just like based on doing that, it was a mixtape and tour game. Yeah. Before you could go just, because it was almost like, you a good artist, bro, but if you don't sign this deal, there's no other economy for you. And it was making artists just take whatever they, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But Did be, you ever get close? Cause when, when you say I walked into certain labels and it didn't happen, yeah. you know what I'm saying? At at one point, were you ever close to like signing something that you say, man, I'm glad I didn't mess with that? Yeah, I won't go into details because I, I wouldn't yeah. want to, you know what I mean? But definitely, I, I considered um, options. I think the best situation, aside from the one I said I won't mention, and you know, I was I was gonna do the deal. Mm -hmm. Is what when when Ross put the MMG thing on the table. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I got you. That was just, just the terms and the way you know Ross set up the conversation to start in that building. It was a great opportunity. It was a great situation. Um, I just had a concern with my team getting credit for breaking Nipsey Hustle, so I didn't I didn't I didn't necessarily want to take that from my team. Damn, you know what I mean. But outside of that, I would have took that deal. Even just outside of the terms, just how Ross hustle, I believe in Ross as a hustler. You know what I'm saying? Everything he didn't said, he didn't done. Every combo we had, every time I sent a verse, he executed it. Mm -hmm. So I got a lot of respect for Rose. So I'd have done it off just GP, but I got a team I committed to ahead of time. Damn. And I needed to make sure they got the credit for what they did. You know what I mean? That was the only reason. But outside of that, all the other deals, um, they lacked what the MMG offer mm -hmm. included because it was somebody that understood why Nipsey is valuable without a radio record. And you was already doing your thing anyway. Yeah, yeah, You know what yeah. I'm saying? So if anybody got to come, they got to add to it. Yeah. And 100%. add a lot to it. Yeah. You know? When you yeah. give someone like LeBron James an unreleased song, there's got to be some kind of agreement between you. Like, to him, but like, <laughs> like all right, you can man. have it. That's your but partner. you have this amount of, t like, 
don't release it or don't, you know, film a video of you working out to it between you guys, right? I think anybody give LeBron a song, they hoping that he work out to it. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I think hey, that's the whole point. Yeah. Nah, but truthfully, you know, I seen a, I seen a clip of LeBron in the locker room in 2011, game six, and he had on some headphones, and he wasn't talking to no reporters. He was suiting up for the game. This ended up being, I think, the game he won his first championship in mm. game six, 011, I think. But when you when he took his headphones off, you could hear the music bleeding out, and he was playing the marathon. Go ahead now. He was playing Blue Laces 1. So I made Blue Laces 2 for Victory Lap. And so as I'm thinking about a creative way to start the acknowledgement that it's Blue Laces 2 going to be on this Victory Lap album, because that's one of my fans' favorite songs, Made I remember LeBron was in a, in a championship mode listening Damn. to Blue Laces. So I sent it to LeBron, and he went on and uh, put on his Instagram and all that. And um, Did you catch wow. that, the, the way everybody else caught it, like just, just looking yeah, you know, it ain't say it ain't the the YouTube line wasn't right. LeBron in the yeah. locker room playing Nipsey Hustle. It was just I, I don't know I watch YouTube and I be just tapping into like dope moments mm -hmm. like when when Jordan was had the flu or when LeBron got his first ring or when you know what I mean James Harden uh Brent for fifty whatever. Did you points. play sports? Yeah, I played basketball. Basketball? Yeah, for sure. Are you good in basketball? I was. I was right. good. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I can't vouch for right yeah, now man. where my skill set is at now. Do you ever play in those celebrity basketball games? Man, you know what? I ain't never done it because I don't yeah, know. Thank you, I'm brother. prideful, man. I can't. If I play, we gotta win. Mm. Right. Yeah, I ain't gonna be on record taking no L's. You know. Man, so. well, if you, if you do want to take an L, play for my BET team next year. <laughs> <laughs> I lose every year. I, 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 I might, I I might be the factor. I might be the factor you need, big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I won the hey, last Vanessa, one though. I'm gonna win. Yeah, I did. I, did. I won. Hello, there it is. Oh, you won. <laughs> yeah. So All right. So I might consider the offer. There it is. <laughs> nah, but, but listen, I, I did a, a turkey drive. Mm -hmm. where I participated with Russell Westbrook's mm -hmm. Russell Westbrook's turkey drive at Jesse Owens Park mm -hmm. last year, and I looked at the picture we took, and I'm standing neck and neck, and I'm like, I'm damn, I'm damn near tall as this nigga. Is. Hey, yeah. Serving these How niggas. How tall are you? I'm like six three, probably. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So. I, I I reconsidered my uh my NBA dreams a little bit, you know man. But you you played high school ball. I mean, not on the team or nothing. Mm -hmm. I Street played ball? just like yeah around the area and everything. Yeah, my man said not on the team. You know, <laughs> like, like man, I had to eat and everything. But I'm you know what I mean? Yeah, like, <laughs> nah, you know? man, you know, yeah. <laughs> life. You know what I'm saying? Honestly, we did. I did. I think I played for my ninth grade team for like two games, mm -hmm. and then. Realistically, I just wasn't with the yelling, coaches screaming. I'm not against it. That just wasn't my state. At that was, time, and yeah, then yeah, the structure I, of it, yeah, like I wasn't even, I wasn't ready for that. Yeah, because so. cats used to always ask, "Man, you didn't play football in high school?" Like, nah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, and it we, wasn't about discipline. It's just like, nah. Was, yeah. Nah. And and, I, you and know, I was called up at that time too, though. 100. percent Yeah. And yeah. just a lot of factors, but it wasn't my, it wasn't my goal in life. So I, I, by the time I was in high school, I wasn't really going at it. Nah, I hear you. You know? Nipsey, a while back after Eminem dissed Trump, YG tweeted, so why don't we get no credit for dissing Trump a year ago? Right. You know, he was pretty upset because you guys put out Fuck Donald Trump mm -hmm. a year ago, literally. Do you feel that hip hop has taken a seat back with all of these political issues? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't, I think that our reaction to being disrespected we gotta, we gotta, we have to reassess how we react. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think that we've been known as as hip hop to to make songs, and that's a part of it. And then we gotta, we gotta go a step further because I think that it's like a disease in your body. Once you start giving it a treatment, it'll get immune to the treatment, mm -hmm. and you gotta try something else to kill that disease. So mm -hmm. I think protest music is important. I think that YG was a genius, but even how the song came up. We mm -hmm. were just in the studio talking about doing a collab mixtape. And he like, what you think about this Donald Trump shit? I'm like, I thought it was a joke. I did yeah, not man. think he was really going to be able to right. secure a Republican uh, endorsement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, even when, I didn't think that was possible. So the way the song came out, it was really like some movie shit. We was talking about it. He like, I got a beat. What you think? He played the beat. Then he started bouncing his head and was like, what you think about this? He said the hook. Mm. We like, go lay it. He laid it. And the shit was like, everybody in the studio like, is this something? Right. Like, you just saying fuck Donald Trump. 
over and over yeah, on the hook. But in the beat, I don't know. It just immediately clicked with niggas like this something. Let's finish this right now. And we just knocked it out in one take. Hey man, but and how yeah. early? Because y'all were so on it before early. the disaster started. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. y'all was on the giddy of like the mm -hmm. you know, yeah. it, it hadn't even laid yet. Yeah. And and to this day, it's really F Donald Trump now. But y'all yeah. Y'all stood up and y'all said it. And keeping it real one one thou wow with you, a lot of big business, including where we work, yeah. was like, hold on, we gotta, you know what I'm saying? Reassess like, it, yeah. Yeah, man. Definitely. I mean, not to cut you off. No, go ahead. I think that um again, it was it was done as an artistic decision mm -hmm. to, to to express our opinions through the art. And then once it became a song and turned into a product, we start seeing, you know how um dangerous that message was and how how important how powerful dude is right in these different places because um did you feel y'all did y'all feel any of that where it was like there's an influence here like explain some of the stuff that made you feel that i mean for sure i don't know if everybody heard but the cia reached out mm -hmm. you know and sent a letter damn yeah. and see that's what i'm talking about that like i was telling yg i was like man that's our modern day FBI letter to to uh, NWA. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. And just to be on the radar and even see how they described us in the letter. You know what I mean? Talking about gang affiliations and it was it was like somebody in there did a lot of research. Yeah. You know, but I think that um we can't we can't be afraid to to speak truth. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. think we told no lies in that song. I don't think we was threatening I think we spoke on how the people felt. What did they exactly. say? What did the CIA yeah. letters? Was, was it a, a cease and desist? Look, like, stop. It, it was a combination of like changes that they that they said if if these changes aren't made that we will pursue um, blocking this from getting distributed. And it was, it was also just a, um, a informative, like I guess release. Like we see you too, though. Yeah, and even today, like you on the radar. And, and today, internal. That was like you know the, this is this is the November twelfth bulletin. Whatever that was, and and, and we count, we we got a copy of it. You know what does I mean? Does that come like in normal mail? Like, excuse me, <laughs> like does that come as a letter? Like sometimes I throw away mail, and I never know. But like, I look it at it like this. You know, everybody got an altitude that they exist in in business. So, you know, YG being in business with Def Jam, um, uh huh, Def yeah. Jam got have, it. having a, a a chairman, Def Jam might have a parent company. That's probably where the convo Got took it. place at. You know what okay. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then it just was like, this one of your label or this one of your radio stations, one of your labels. Um, let's let's make sure that this product. Yeah, get the yeah yeah yeah. yeah let's make sure that this don't go no further. Big boys Big neighborhood. Boy. Nip definitely want to thank you for coming yeah. into the neighborhood and always, hanging out, man. Always. And for anyone out there, I do want to say this, man. And, and 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 let me just say this, Nip. Like, um, we don't do a you know you you family here. Yeah. And I know that there's people like, oh y'all didn't ask like we not gonna ask that. You right. know what I'm saying? Like right. this per things my, personally that. I don't want, and as per, you know, so just being family, yeah. we don't do those things. When you're ready to address whatever it is in your life, yeah. then you'll do it on your and, own platform. And I, and I love and I appreciate y'all for that. And I just want everybody to know, like, people, real people outside of music and outside of, so things can be delicate. Yeah, yeah, So we got to so. always be respectful and always be conscious of, like, myself. Right. I got feelings. I'm a yeah. human. You yeah, know what I, I mean? My family got feelings. They're humans. And we got to be really, really careful. You man. Know, and meet me first You know what I mean Enough said yeah. I appreciate you coming in man And congratulations Congrats, once again man. On Victory Thank Lap you. Yes sir Go Thank ahead you. now Congratulations Thank on uh, Money All In On your All In situation yeah. With yeah. Atlantic yeah. All, money in. In. All, all money, money in All Money in Atlantic All Money in Atlantic Yeah Congratulations to you on that as well man Thank you man. And we'll see Hell we'll see you soon mm -hmm. Absolutely There it is man Absolutely. Nipsey Hustle in the neighborhood Big Boy Big Neighborhood boy. Yeah